Hello dear learners, welcome for redox titration part 4 or we can say the type of redox titrations part 2. In part 1, I have discussed many methods like serimetry, bromatometry, okay, dichromatry and permanganometry. Today in this part 2, I will discuss the type of redox titrations like the methods like iodometry, iodometry and potassium iodide titration. So first of all, what is the difference between iodimetry and iodometry? So iodimetry means here, as in a previous lecture, we have seen that the different type of titrant is there for different methods. So for iodimetry, there is a iodine as a titrant. And for iodometry, the iodide as a titrant we have to use. And in iodimetry, the iodine is used as a oxidizing agent or react as a oxidizing agent but in iodometry what happened the iodide is used or we can say react as a reducing agent so this is the basic difference between iodometry and iodometry titration and then we will see the potassium iodide titration so first we will see what is iodometry titration so, what is the basic principle for iodimetric titration? As we are discussing the redox reaction, its oxidation and reduction process involving iodine is called in general iodimetric titration. The direct titration, it is a type of direct titration with a standard solution of iodine is termed as a iodimetric. So, solutions for iodine are a weak oxidizing agents. Okay, I2 we are using as a it's act as a weak oxidizing agent and that are used for determination of strong oxidizing agents okay so we can see we can clear it by one example here the triiodide ion i3 we are taking as a triiodide ion okay so there is a Gaining of electron, that is we are adding two electrons, so it will giving three I minus. Okay, as it act as a oxidation, okay, oxidizing agent. So what happened? The iodine will reduce itself, okay, and oxidize other. So standard iodine solutions have relatively limited applications compared with the other oxidants. Because significantly they have a smaller electrode potential. So solution of iodine in aqueous media has an intense yellow or a brown color. Okay, this is very important. But iodine can serve as its own indicator. We can say self indicator. So the star solution is used as an indicator for the endpoint. When we are doing titration with iodine, okay, iodine is a act as oxidizing agent, but it's a weak oxidizing agent. So for more accurate endpoint, we are using starch solution for the endpoint. Now we will see the application. So for iodimetry, so we can do assay of sodium hyposulfide as well as we can say the assay of sodium metabisulfide by iodimetry. Now there is a second thing. It's a iodometry titration. What is iodometry titration? As I said, the titration in which equivalent amount of I2 is liberated from potassium iodide by the sample and the liberated I2, liberated iodide, okay, that we will titrate with the standard Sodium thiosulfate solution, it's a determination of strong oxidizing agent, it's called iodometry. Here we are using the liberated iodide, not iodine. And this is used as a, act as a, we can say a reducing agent, okay. So the titration in which the liberated iodine is titrated with sodium thiosulfate using starch mucilage, as an indicator, it's a iodometric titration. So, 
we can see by the example in a sodium thiosulfate when we are adding I2 it will produce the Na2S2 S4O6 and 2 NaI okay so this is our reaction now we will see the standardization of 0.1 molar sodium thiosulfate okay so how we can prepare first the 0.1 molar sodium thiosulfate so to prepare 0.1 molar sodium thiosulfate solution we have to dissolve 25 gram of sodium thiosulfate in water okay we have to add 0.2 gram of Na2 CO3 means sodium carbonate in CO2 free water and we have to take this solution in a 1000 ml water we have to dilute it with a 1000 ml of water so this is how we can prepare it now standardization of the solution so for standardization we are using the potassium bromate so we have to dissolve 0.2 gram potassium bromate solution in a 250 ml of water from that 250 ml solution we have to take 50 ml of solution we have to add 2 gram of potassium iodide and 3 ml of 2 molar HCl solution and we have to titrate this solution against sodium thiosulfate solution okay until the blue color disappears okay we have to titrate it with the Na2S2O3 until the blue color disappears here we can include starch as an indicator for accurate endpoint so the IP factor we can say the equivalent factor so this is the equivalent factor and this is how we can do the calculations now we will see the applications so by aromatic titration we can do the assay of copper sulfate okay it is used as a bleaching powder phenol in assay of in a direction of chloramines the chlorate determination of arsenic trioxide hydrogen peroxide h2so3 the benzyl penicillin and aric sulfate so these are the different applications of aromatic titrations now we will see the third method it's a potassium iodide titration so we can see it's a iodide metric titration so potassium iodide is a powerful oxidizing agent it reacts with both iodide and iodine we can say arsenides and other reducing agents iodide titration okay it's a type of iodide titration here first we have seen iodine it's a iodometry then iodometry now it's a iodide it's a iodidometry we can say so this titration can be performed in presence of alcohol okay, we can use saturated organic acid and other organic matter so the basic principle behind iodato metric titration it is a for specifically potassium iodate titration it's a reaction between potassium iodate and re reducing agent such as iodide ion we are using or we can say H2O3 in a solution of a moderate acidity we can say 0.12 to 2 molar HCl stops at state when the iodide the iodate is reduced to iodine so here basically the iodate is reduced to it is reduced to iodine so here we are using KiO3 the potassium iodate we are adding potassium iodide and there is a reaction between these two and we are getting iodide now this again we are adding SO3 and HCl so iodine is liberated so here we are getting iodide as well as iodine now we will see preparation and standardization of 0 0.05 molar potassium iodide so first to prepare 0 0.05 molar potassium iodide solution we have to use first first of all we have to dry the potassium iodide at 120 degrees centigrade temperature for one hour after that we have to allow it to cool in a desiccator then we have to weigh about 10.7 gram of finely powdered potassium iodide we have to dissolve it into the water and 
we have to rotate our flask until the salt is completely dissolved. Here we have to do the complete dissolution. Then sufficient water is added to produce 1000 ml. So this is how, so this is how we can prepare 0 0.05 molar potassium potassium added solution. Now standardization. So to a definite volume of this solution we have to add excess of potassium iodide and as we have already seen we have to add dilute HCl. Now titrate okay after that iodine will be titrated so that titrate that liberated iodine we have to titrate with sodium thiosulfate solution. So this is how we can perform the titration. Now we will see the applications. So iodatometric methods okay from that we can identify the potassium iodide the weak i2 solution aqueous i2 solution sodium ditriosite iodide oil fuel injection it is used for determination of hgcl2 and for hydrolazine hcl and injection iv so this is all about different type of redox titrations you dear learners for watching the video